Land's End, the most westerly point in England, and not far from where the first Atlantic cables were landed in 1870, at Porth Kernan. Here, since that time, the cable companies have operated, and today at Porth Kernow is the Cable and Wireless Engineering College. Young men from many countries come here who want to enter the world of telecommunications. They come from the West Indies, South America, Africa, from the Arabian Gulf and many parts of Asia, and from a dozen other places besides Britain. They come in the first place for a course of 18 months and work in small groups, never more than 16 in all. They get a grounding in a wide range of subjects, starting with elementary electricity and magnetism. The course assumes a starting knowledge of physics equivalent to general certificate level and is geared to the special needs of telecommunications. All the courses are a mixture of lectures followed by practical work, largely based on equipment used in commercial working and testing. Experiments, for example, to discover what happens to a signal passing along varying lengths of submarine cable and finding out how to correct any distortion and make it suitable for recording. or to examine closely the performance of a type of relay used in a submarine cable system. Or to find the exact spot where a submarine cable has broken. And during the whole course, everyone becomes an efficient operator, able to handle the machines which actually send and receive the messages. Every student learns how to read and transcribe five unit coded tape and how to punch the tape for transmission. The course aims to get everyone up to a maximum of 25 words a minute and keep in practice. Everyone also learns to read Morse as it is still useful on some radio links. After about a year of general studies, each group divides into those specializing in cable operations and those in radio engineering. On the radio side, the transmitter course covers a wide field from how to set up drive equipment and line up oscillator levels to the transmitter itself, like this three and a half kilowatt one which students are setting up on a new frequency. The course includes sections on many different types of receivers and transmitters, including the latest self-tuning ones. On the cable or central telegraph office side, the corresponding group of students also covered a variety of subjects and sections include telephone working. Both radio and cable students may return for advanced courses. This group is from Hong Kong. They're having a special course to tie in with a new overseas switching center in Hong Kong, where at the termination of the Commonwealth cable, the most modern type of crossbar exchange is installed. Broadband radio a course concerned with the technique of sending a number of signals on one very short wavelength. And much of the work is centered around waveguide experiments. In practice, these microwaves are used for many direct communication links and for tropospheric scatter, a way of sending signals hundreds of miles beyond the horizon. This method is of increasing importance in many parts of the world and is now being brought into use by cable and wireless in the West Indies, the Arabian Gulf and Hong Kong. The waves have similar characteristics to those used for satellites. Here a student is plotting a radiated field pattern, tracing the strength of the transmission coming out from the small dish. In addition to experiments within the laboratory, work is sometimes extended into the surrounding countryside. In propagation studies, students go out with portable transceivers to study the effect of various topographical features on the strength of the received signal. Control to base. One of the sections with the most complex equipment is ARQ, Automatic Error Correction. This is of vital importance with modern high-speed transmissions. The early machines were based on electromechanical principles, but the latest devices are fully transistorized and more compact and more reliable. They use similar principles to those of a computer. The equipment ensures that if, due say to radio interference, an error appears at the receiving end, an immediate request for repetition is sent, and the repetition is automatically made. As in other departments, all students receive an elementary course and later may return to Fourth Kernow for a more advanced one. 
There are usually about a hundred students at the college, and when they're not working, they find plenty to do in the nearby town and surrounding country. It is, after all, one of the holiday areas of Britain. And in nearby Penzance, they can enjoy the life of the town along with the hundreds of visitors. Summer, too, is the time for the Minac theatre season, an unusual open-air theatre on the cliffs just above the college. It has been in existence for 30 years. The dress rehearsals take place in the afternoon, but the performances are at night. This season, The Merchant of Venice, performed by a local company, includes in its cast and among its helpers numbers of students from the college. So that through this and many other ways, by the time a student gets to the end of his course, he shouldn't just have passed his exams, he should also have had an enjoyable time and made many new friends. Now that you have completed your training, those of you from overseas will be returning to your home branches. Those of you from the United Kingdom will be posted to a variety of countries throughout the world. There you will put into practice the engineering experience which you have learnt here at Porth Kernow. You will be working on a wide variety of equipment and you will learn more from the engineers in charge of our activities throughout the world. A few among you may be sent onto our company cable ships, which help to lay and maintain a network of coaxial cables. Cable Ship Mercury has recently been engaged on an intensive series of cable laying operations and has just laid a cable from Tortola to Bermuda to improve the West Indies communications with the rest of the world. Cable ships are based in the West Indies, Rio de Janeiro, Gibraltar, Fiji or Hong Kong. However, the great majority of postings will be to our branches overseas. Those of you who have had coaxial training will be sent to stations such as Hong Kong, which is a very important link in our coaxial network, connecting the United Kingdom with Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the Far East. On the lonely island of Ascension is the group's first satellite Earth station, set up for the Apollo moonshot program. This is a forerunner of several stations in different parts of the world which some of you may be helping to maintain in the near future. When you have passed further examinations, you will qualify for more responsible posts as engineers in charge of our stations and there will also be opportunities to progress on the managerial side. From my own past experience, I'm sure that you will have a most interesting life. Indeed, by helping to provide an essential service to the communities of the world, you will have a most worthwhile career in the cable and wireless group of companies. <laughs>